Hey everyone, welcome and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I will be showing you how I sketch and paint this hotel in Venice. I will be using the Sakura Micron pen size 03 to do the line work. And this is a Kadi sketchbook and the paper is 100% recycled cotton rag. So this is the reference photo of a hotel in Venice, which I found on Unsplash, which is a website where you can find many beautiful pictures. And you can find a link to it down in the description of this video. Props to the photographer for capturing this beautiful picture. I love those shadows and how this subject is framed. However, I did look up a few more photos of this hotel and some of them do show plants on the balconies on the top floor, which I think I will add. So for today, I'm going to use my pen to sketch straight away without a pencil sketch first. So for a subject like this, I like to start in the center and divide it up into upper and lower parts. We are looking at the subject at an angle. So we have all these lines that are converging towards the left side, far off the page. So things on the right side are closer to us and appear slightly larger. It's good to keep all that in mind whilst we are sketching. So right now I'm sketching that awning almost in the center of that page. I'm using very loose strokes, making sure that the right side is a little wider than the left side of this awning and at this point i think also that my pen tip is either um, too thin or it's running out of ink but um, no worries i'm just going to change to a slightly wider tip which is a size 04 and that one is also a newer pen The paper is also a little bit rough, the surface is a bit rough, and I prefer a slightly thicker line. So I think it's looking a little bit better. Um, the lines don't appear as scratchy as when I was using that previous pen. I'm not sure if it was because um, the ink is sort of running out, but I think um, it's not a big difference between 04 and 04 three anyway actually so i'm being quite loose with these lines i'm trying to um, sketch a little faster and not to think too much i'm not worrying about being really accurate or trying to get things exactly the same as that picture right there and sometimes sometimes i think of these sketches as an exercise for when I'm outside sketching because there are often um, time constraints when sketching outside and there's a lot of things going on people passing by and um, noises and things things happen so often that I have to push myself to um, think less and to not sketch every single detail or fuss over every single line but instead to focus on the overall subject and focus on capturing the atmosphere of the place instead of every single detail and um, being super duper accurate however Loose lines aside, I do pay attention to the main perspective rules, which I did mention earlier um, about the converging lines and the size of each element and each shape. So those are the things that I focus on whilst I'm sketching.
Here I am attempting to sketch that model of a ship on that window ledge. And remember not to focus on the details and I'm just trying to capture the general shape of that thing, uh, that object, and not to put too much detail in it because it is not the main focal point and I don't want people's eyes to just go into that area of too much detail. So people's, a viewer's eyes will naturally go to the place of the most detail first for, uh, for a piece like this, for a sketch like this. So it's prudent to not add too much detail, especially at the beginning stages, at the initial stages, and just to, you know, just give just enough, be loose, and then if it's not enough detail, you can always add it in later. So here I am tackling that chair, and when I'm tackling something that is a little bit more complicated, um, it can be helpful um, to divide things up into simpler shapes first, and then I slowly build up a more complex shape from those um, simple shapes. So something that looks complicated um, usually is just made out of these very simple shapes. So don't, you know, get intimidated. Just try and simplify. Now I'm going to sketch a second plant box here. And normally I would make it a little bit smaller than the one on the right side because anything that is further away from us looks smaller, right? It's uh, common sense. But the plant on the left side is actually slightly bigger in the photo. So that's why I sketched it a little bit bigger than the one on the right side. So usually when you draw two of the same things in one sketch, like the chairs and later on the windows as well, it's important to make sure that we draw the window or the chair that is further away from us a little bit smaller. So this is a very um, simple thing, but very important for creating that sense of depth and perspective. Here I am drawing in those bricks and I'm trying to create an impression of a brick wall by only drawing a few bricks and adding some of these lines. And as you can see, I'm sketching the bricks on the right side much bigger than the ones on the left side, which is similar to what you see in the picture. All right, so we are halfway done and moving to the top half. We have two windows there and the left one is smaller than the right side. And not don't forget also to leave a little space for that signboard in the center. All right, so this signboard is really just a box with some frills around it. No need to follow the original exactly. Just sticking to the overall shape and main loops there should be fine.
Here I've started to draw these、um, tiny balconies to place the plants in, and I think they are actually called window boxes. And、um, Venice has a lot of these, and I find them really interesting and beautiful, of course. So here I'm adding in some final details, and there are lots of details already. So I'm trying not to add too much more, and you want to be really careful at this stage. It's quite easy to add too much detail in、um, certain parts of the sketch, and then end up with an unbalanced sketch. All right, so we are done with the outlines. Let's proceed to the painting. And today I'm using this Winsor and Newton Cotman Sketchers pocket box, as well as these little synthetic brushes. The largest one is size eight round, and the smallest is size four. As usual, you can find links to most of the materials that I use down in the video description below. So you can see that I'm mixing sap green and yellow ochre together to、um, mix that first color, which is a light green. So that will be my first layer for the greens. And after I've added that first layer of light green, I then add in more sap green plus ultramarine to that first mix. For a darker second layer of green. So you notice that the first layer is still wet. So when I'm dabbing that second layer, you can see the two different greens mixing on the page, and the new paint is spreading into that wet paint which is already on the page. And to me, that is one of the most satisfying things to watch. And after that, I repeat the same process for the plants on the top outside those windows. And this is a very simple way of painting bushes and plants. Next, I'm using a mixture of burnt sienna and burnt umber to fill in those wood-colored areas. So. First, I'm laying the paint down quite evenly, and after that, I give it a slight variation.、Uh, I'm giving that wood some variation by dabbing in a little touch of yellow ochre with a different brush. So it, it's a little, a little bit like adding a bit of sunshine, a bit of sunlight on that area right there. Whilst painting that door, I'm also leaving tiny little spots unpainted, as you can see. So the white of the paper shows through, and this could be leaves. It could be speckles of light. Then I dab in a little bit more of the brown to darken some areas on that door. Then I repeat the same process for the other wood-colored areas.
For the windows on the upper floor, I'm going to paint the shutters with bolder and larger strokes, leaving a bit more white space unpainted, so we have a looser feel. So basically for one shutter, I'm putting in one or two strokes and sort of seeing what happens with that white space. Leaving a few areas unpainted may feel unnatural at first, but I find it a good way to incorporate highlights into the piece, both naturally and organically. Now I'm going to paint the glass on the windows with cerulean blue and another second mix of ultramarine, burnt umber, and burnt sienna. So first I dab in some cerulean blue and then I proceed with the darker gray blue using a different brush. I'm also going to add a very light touch of burnt sienna to the bottom of that window pane. So I love the gradient that this creates. As you can see, we're not exactly following that photo reference. We are following the reference very loosely, but we're paying attention mostly to perspective, shadows later, and um, the lights and the darks. In fact, I'm going to change the color of the wall to make it less orange than um, it is it, than it appears to be in that reference photo. So I'm going to try and make it more yellowish instead. And you can look up different reference, reference photos for this subject, this hotel, and you will notice that the color and the light can be very different depending on the time of day, the camera lens, or sometimes the filter that the photographer uses. So today you get to choose what time of day and what colors you would like to recreate on the page. So right now I'm repeating the same steps for the other windows and they do look very light at the moment. So I'm making the windows at the bottom much darker using more paint and less water. I'm actually using the same mix, the same um, dark gray blue mix, but I'm using more paint and less water. And now I'm filling in more areas with that blue-gray mix, the lamp, chairs, and that signboard on top. For the wall, I'm going to mix an orange, but more yellow than the orange color in the picture. So the mixture is made out of cadmium yellow hue, yellow ochre, burnt sienna, and cadmium red pale hue. So those are the four colors that I used for this mix.
So I am really quite happy with that mix and I think it really complements the other colors in this sketch. In fact, if you look up other reference photos of this hotel, this Hotel Ugly Alboretti, you will find that the color of that wall really isn't as dark orange as it is in this reference photo. It is actually, it actually looks more yellowish. And this might be because um, of different camera settings, post-editing, or maybe the color is just different because of the different time of day. Or maybe they just painted the wall a different color. So I think walls of old buildings are really fun because you don't expect them to be perfect. It's okay if the paint is not even or there are stains and a little chipped off paint. It is a great opportunity as well to do lots of dry brushing and to use different tones of paint to make scratches even and leave some areas unpainted. So to me, this hotel looks pretty well maintained, but if you look closely, you can see those little signs of wear and tear, which to me just adds to the beauty of the space and the story behind it. All right, so as you can see, I've started to add the shadows. And this is one of the most anticipated parts for me. Just, you know, adding in some shadows here and there can really bring a sketch to life. So I'm just using the same old gray-blue mix that we used earlier, which is a mix of burnt sienna and ultramarine, but with a little more burnt sienna added to it, so it's less bluish. So from the reference photo, we can see that the light source is coming from the top right area. So all these shadows have a beautiful slant towards the left side. Here I'm just painting a few lines across using my filbert brush and I'm using a light wash. Sometimes just using the tip of the brush to create these really thin lines. Here I'm adding a second layer of grey to darken the shadows, especially at the bottom below those chairs and that table.
So right now I'm painting in those bricks and I'm going to make some of them lighter and some of them darker. So variation really makes things more interesting. So now I'm painting an even darker shade of grey, at this point it looks almost black and I'm reserving these only for the most darkest of spots. Although the contrast on that plant on the left became a little bit too strong for me and I find that it drew too much unwanted attention over to that spot right there. So I'm going to soften those edges on that shadow and immediately after softening those edges, it doesn't look so strong and eye-catching anymore. So one of the last shadows here is um, a slightly tougher one and it is the shadow for that signboard and because it is slanting in that way and it has a lot of curves it is a little bit challenging and I'm using the tip of that brush to carefully try and mimic that slant that we see in the photo. So as you can see, it's not exactly the same. And in fact, I decided that I needed to do a correction after I finished painting, which um, at that time I felt like I needed to do. And so I'm just using a clean damp brush, just lifting some paint from one side of that part right there. And then I'm painting this part a little bit higher up because it was a little bit skewed to the left right so i think um, that little correction made it slightly better Alright, so we're done with the shadows and now I'm mixing cadmium red pale hue, alizarin crimson hue and burnt sienna and I'm going to be using this brownish red color to paint little dots of red here and there on that sketch. So now I'm 
trying to paint the logo on the signboard right there and it's not a simple shape this is really tiny and it's very hard to go into detail but I tried making an impression of that logo and in the end I actually really didn't like it and I, I didn't really like the color as well so I actually restarted I lifted that paint off I did um, a correction I, I just rubbed everything off with a damp clean brush and just start it over. So if you do attempt something like this, you do have to wait for that space, that place that you want to do the correction to dry first before repainting. So sometimes I forget to do that and I make a, another mess because it's uh, still wet, right? So usually I go on to do other parts and just do like little details on other areas before I go back in and do my correction. So at this point, the signboard is almost dry. It's a little bit damp still. So it's uh, now we're doing a little bit of wet on wet and just putting a few strokes down and I'm not trying to do as much as I did in the first round. All right, so we are done. I love the looser feeling of this one. And one thing that I especially love about this is how the texture of that paper gives so much texture to this sketch. And those jagged edges everywhere really contributes to a sort of rustic feeling. All right, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you found it helpful to you, do remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.